Here I'm going to cover some common cannabis nutrient deficiencies and some of the char characteristic looks that these may have. Uh, we can see here um, all these plants' leaves don't look quite right. Um, some of it is due to light um, damage, but other abiotic factors. Some is also related to nutrients. Being able to distinguish and identify those is important to any efficient grow operation. So first off, we're looking at nutrients. We want to consider mobile versus immobile nutrients. Mobile can be translocated from older growth to newer growth tissue. This means that the deficiency of these nutrients will first show up in the older plant material. It's kind of being stolen from those older leaves and shifted uh, to those newer growing leaves. Immobile nutrients are essentially fixed in place. It's kind of like the broken down car kind of represents uh, in the plant. And as a result, they don't translocate very well. So the newer growth will tend to show those uh, first signs of deficiencies. When we're looking at nutrients, we want to classify them. There's three main categories. The primary nutrients are the major nutrients needed by the plants in large quantities. This is the three numbers on the fertilizer, the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Secondary nutrients are needed in smaller quantities than primary nutrients. And the three uh, secondary nutrients are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Lastly, we have the micronutrients, and these are required nutrients by the plant, but in very small quantities. Uh, common uh, micronutrients are boron, chlorine, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, and zinc. Now, there's, we're going to look at fertilizer options. There's uh, chelated uh, fertilizers, um, and these chelated fertilizers are often more stable and plant-available sources of nutrients. So something, if possible to get, these are usually advised because this improves the fertilizer use efficiency by the plant. Fertilizers in this category can often be used as foliar applications applied to the leaves, uh, in addition to being media applied, which can help reduce the time the plant remains nutrient deficient. So let's get into some of the nutrients uh, deficiency here. Well, we'll start with nitrogen. Uh, it's a mobile nutrient, often associated with the degree of green that the plant has. Deficiency is yellowing of lower leaves, and fertilizer recommendations are urea, calcium nitrate, or blood meal if you're looking at a pure organic option. Now, looking at this example here of nitrogen uh, deficiency, we can see the newer growth is green and the older growth is yellow because the nitrogen is mobile, so it's being stolen from these older leaves and pushed to the newer growth, at least at the early onset. If this is allowed to continue, eventually all the leaves will uh, turn yellow, but that initial onset, that nitrogen is being moved by the plant to that newer uh, material here, this is why it looks nice and green. Phosphorus is also a mobile nutrient. It's often associated with adding uh, for increased root growth and flower production. Deficiency is characterized by a purple coloration of the leaves, kind of as we see here, even though this is not the only possible cause for purple coloration. Uh, other stresses can also call purple color. Uh, but that is something that's typically associated with phosphorus. Triple superphosphate is a great fertilizer to remedy that, and also manure. With the amount of bloom fertilizers most growers use, this tends not to be an issue uh, it's typically the other case where growers are over-adding a phosphorus. Potassium is a mobile nutrient, often associated with sugar in production of fruit yield. Deficiency is evident by yellowing of the leaf margins. And what is that? Well, the margins are the very outside uh, of the leaves here. That's what we see in this image. These margins are yellowing, and this is a clear indication that this plant is probably going showing potassium deficiency. As a result, uh, sulfate potassium or potassium chloride are recommended as fertilizer. Keep in mind potassium chloride has higher nutrient content, about 10% more, somewhere around 60% of potassium, but also has a greater salt content uh, than potassium sulfate, which is um, about 50% potassium. So again, you want to weigh different fertilizer options. But at least knowing this plant is potassium deficient gives you a great way to target particular fertilizer within your plan so that this doesn't happen in the future. Calcium is an immobile nutrient, often associated with cell division and formation. Deficiency is evident by stunting of newer growth that typically has brown spots and are poorly forming a flower or, or blossoms. If you've grown tomatoes, very familiar with calcium deficiency is blossom end rot, um, where the calcium is simply not getting through all the tissue. Fertilizer recommendations, Botanica uh, CalMag Max and Biomin Calcium are examples of uh, plant available calcium fertilizers that can help remedy this potential deficiency. Magnesium is another one. This is a mobile nutrient often associated with uh, proper chlorophyll formation. Deficiency is evident by what's called intervenal yellowing of the leaves. You see that here. Fertilizer recommendations are Epsom salts. 
and that inter uh, kind of venal yellowing, this is a good comparison while not cannabis plant between adequate magnesium to low magnesium. The veins maintain their green color and in between them we start to get that yellowing that develops. This is magnesium. Sulfur is another immobile nutrient often associated with nitrogen fixation in a plant. Deficiencies look similar to magnesium but tend to be more even yellowing, not broken up yellow spots like the magnesium. And it can be of greater concern in colder soils in particular. And typically that newer growth will show kind of that overall dulling or yellowing coloration. Epsom salt is recommended. You want to avoid adding straight sulfur, as this will also change the pH um, of the growing media. Copper is another immobile nutrient, and while not very common, it can have severe negative impact on yields. Often associated with bud formation and development, and deficiencies in the younger leaves, the tip or margin or discoloration. We see the kind of tip of this leaf curling up and looking kind of that brownish. This is kind of a characteristic of a copper deficiency. Copper sulfate or other chelated copper products would be advised. If you are spraying them on the leaves, be careful because it can cause um, a chance or a greater chance of leaf burn. Iron is another immobile nutrient, often associated with chlorophyll production and great plant metabolism. Deficiency is evident by the upper leaves turning yellow and is often confused with nitrogen deficiency as the yellowing looks similar to nitrogen, but again, lower leaves in the iron for the upper leaves. So nitrogen will occur in the lower leaves, iron occurs in these upper leaves here. We want to watch the pH, and particularly high phosphorus can negatively impact the availability of iron to the plant. Chelate forms of iron would be advised to correct this potential deficiency. Lastly, we have manganese, MN, an immobile nutrient, often associated with photosynthesis, respiration, and root cell elongation. Deficiencies have some resemblance to iron deficiency, um, as it's intervenal yellowing, chlorosis of the newer leaves. Uh, we can see it looks a little different uh, than the iron is kind of that more even tone. Fertilizer recommendations would be manganese sulfate, or if you're using age-old grow, the grow blend has shown elevated levels of manganese based on t tissue tests. So again, some fertilizers will have higher of one of these kind of more minor nutrients. So by tissue testing and testing your plants, you can have an idea of exactly how um, that fertilizer may react to the plant and what fertilizer you may use if you are starting to notice the beginnings of a deficiency. The earlier you can catch it, the quicker you can correct it, and the reduction in the problem you'll have in your end result in yield.